this. That's the subtitle of the next talk. Um, the next talk will be provided to you by two pen testers who have done pen testing for five years and who experience that a lot of time they are not detected. And this is the question why they are not detected. And they want to show you some easy kinds how to detect them ne next time. The talk is detecting the breach from an attacker's perspective. And the speakers are Rick van Daun and Wesley Nailen. Please give them a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Is mine working? Mine's working, but his isn't. Sorry? You move your phone. Have you tried turning it on and off again? Got it? Yes, yes. Yeah. Is it working now? Yes, yes, it's working. Great. Okay. Well, welcome to our talk, Detecting a Breach from an Attacker's Perspective. Um, like mentioned, we are penetration testers, so probably we are going to regret this, um, because uh, in a lot of tests we are undetected, and we think with the techniques we developed, uh, it, yeah, we could be trapped uh, uh, and detected during our uh, engagements. Um, yeah, we are offensive guys. We have around uh, five years uh, experience uh, penetration testing. We are OSCP and OSCE certified. We are currently working on OSEE. It's advanced exploitation uh, uh, certification from offensive security. And we are working for a defense company uh, named Deerbytes. Um, and yeah, like mentioned, we are pen penetration testing a lot of companies and most of the time we are unnoticed. So we are wondering uh, how is that possible? We are also members of HoneyNet. Uh, this is a, a, yeah, a group of people that, that likes uh, Honeypot and are working on that. Okay, short introduction. Um, as uh, pen testers, we, we notice we don't get detected a lot. And what we do notice is that lots and lots of companies own a SIEM or an IDS, hooking up that IDS to the internet directly, uh, making sure you have like a nice big tree of alerts, lots and lots of data, lots and lots of alerts. And this makes it hard to know uh, when you are actually being breached or when just a, a simple scan is being performed on your external range. Um, this makes it hard to uh, even know and to discern between a human attacker and an automated attack or just like simple ransomware within your network. To us, um, we think there is a need to have a, uh, a clear indicators of, a, of an internal breach. These indicators are a last resort, a last uh, a trick you can have in order to know that you've been breached. Please note that uh, this means, if these indicators go off, this means that somebody has been, is, is already inside of your network and most likely has uh, either high privileges on systems or uh, network level access. We are also mapping uh, yeah, our traps uh, against uh, hacks that already happened. For example, the hacking team, uh, they were breached using a zero day on a router um, and he packaged an, uh, an, a special package for the router and then he was able to end up and to run responder on the network. Um, so he was enumerating the network using end up from that router where he, he came in. Um, he found the iSCSI backup drive um, and uh, he was able to mount it. Um, and he was able to dump the, the, the credentials of a VMDK that was available on that iSCSI drive. Um, with the credentials extracted from that VMDK, he was able to compromise a live system, an exchange server. Again, on that, on, on that server, he was able to extract uh, credentials from the memory using Mimikatz. Uh, after that, he uh, extracted a lot of uh, data, for example, exchange uh, uh, mailboxes. 
Next to the hacking team hack, we have the DigiNotar hack. For all Dutch people, this must be a, a familiar scenario. Um, DigiNotar was a, a company uh, selling uh, uh, certificates, SSL certificates. And they were breached via an outdated installation of uh, .NET Nuke. And after the breach, the attacker had to look around. He had to figure out where he could go from there. So what he did was uh, uh, investigate the DMZ where the uh, web, ser web server was running. But next to this, he in inspected the configuration of the web server. This showed a connection to a database server in the internal network um, running MS SQL. Well, uh, some, as, uh, some of you may know that MS SQL in default configuration, the old one, not the current one, uh, allows you to, do, uh, to perform XP command shell, which essentially allows you to do uh, SQL queries that execute system commands. This allowed him to uh, pivot his way from the DMZ to the internal network, uh, after which uh, he uh, gained uh, domain admin credentials, uh, possibly via uh, PWDump or Mimikatz. Um, according to his own uh, write-up on Pastebin, uh, he took one month of pivoting through various networks in order to gain access to the signing network. Uh, during this month, he had to uh, attack various systems, had to uh, identify running systems, so making uh, lots and lots of noise. Well, this made us wonder, next to all the pen tests we did, um, why are companies that, well, should know better and should be able to detect a breach are not, not detecting breaches? Uh, how could they have been hacked for such a long time without actually noticing? Uh, and actually, uh, this made us say the famous words, how hard can it be? So we are going to look at it from an attacker's perspective. Um, yeah, we ask ourselves some questions. How do we catch ourselves? Because we have some... Uh, yeah, we are doing similar things every time, uh, like scanning the network. Um, what steps do we take during uh, a pen test? And how do we de detect this behavior? And um, yeah, we concluded that it's important to not detect the tools, but to, de to detect the end goal of an uh, attacker. For example, if you have an important machine within your network, um, then it's great to create a trap uh, uh, which yeah, detects whenever that system is attacked. So a short disclaimer, um, this talks about the way of thinking, not about the tools. There are tools available like Open Canary and Tripwire, so we advise you to use such tools. Uh, these are just a couple of examples, they won't save you. <laughs> um, uh, they are an addition to your existing monitoring or a new way of thinking uh, of implementing your current monitoring. And we hope to inspire you all to look differently uh, towards defending your network and to maybe uh, take in account the offensive uh, approach an attacker would take instead of uh, hoarding uh, large amounts of data and then afterwards trying to figure out what to look at in order to detect the breach. Um, one advice I can give you all, honey all the things, uh, it will help you. Um, regular old honeypots uh, in a network will, will be touched by asset management tooling, stuff like that. However, uh, once you try and uh, uh, um, filter out all the, the background noise, which shouldn't be that much, uh, it will allow you to, to detect interesting things. So we have split up our uh, uh, honeypots in two topics, the pass passive and the active honeypots. The passive honeypots are yeah, just waiting to, to get uh, to be touched, for example. Um, one very simple uh, 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 trick we've made was an, is an internal port scan detector. Um, this is just an, a simple script that uh, uh, monitors uh, uh, to check whether the system is touched in any way. Um, various systems can already do this, of course, um, but these are not single purpose systems. Um, and they are trying to filter out the false positives um, so you might miss some scans. For example, if an attacker performs a slow scan, um, yeah, maybe it's not detected. Um, for example, in the hacking team uh, hack, uh, he performed a slow scan to try to avoid uh, being detected. Um, yeah, attackers need to know what they can attack, um, so we can exploit this by just simply monitoring on that. 
Um, so we have created a port scan detector. Um, this is just only a system which is waiting to be touched. Um, it's doing nothing else. Um, and it's, you can keep it simple. For example, this uh, one-liner TCP, uh, you can use it to monitor whether your system is touched or not. And then you can uh, 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 yeah, uh, get a warning, for example. Um, I've created a video of this. Um, first, you will see uh, an NMOP scan, which is performed on our honeypot. And this is the honeypot that detects uh, yeah, the port scan. Every port that is touched uh, is displayed over here. And you can yeah, make a not notification of that. This is, again, the, the NMOP uh, results. We've also created uh, IP tables forwarding. So every request is forwarded to another system. So it looks even uh, real. But at least we know that the system is touched. Um, we've also created uh, um, uh, yeah, a program that increases the attack area of this. Um, it is possible to uh, assign multiple virtual uh, interfaces that allow you to assign static IP addresses in multiple segments, for example, for example, the DMZ and the internal network. Um, yeah, you can specify DSP addresses. For example, I want 10 DCP, but you can also assign it static. So this improve, improves the uh, yeah, the simple port scan detector, it's now listening on all those uh, interfaces. As you can see here, it's the same output as from the video, uh, but now it's on different IP addresses, so you can use the single system to put it in multiple segments. Um, yeah, it's just a system that's hanging into your network, but you can make it look even more real. For example, you can give it an interesting name like DC02, PV store. Uh, super secret, whatever, what is interesting in your company. Um, so you can add DNS records uh, in your network uh, for that. You can add it to multiple subnets and VLANs. For example, I would place one in DMZ, one in the internal network, and whenever the uh, port scan detector is touched within your DMZ, it's strange because there are no systems that, are, uh, that needs to be touching that system. Um, yeah, to make it even more real, you can also add it to Active Directory because a lot of systems in a network will be. And we created a whitelist uh, white functionality. Um, for example, if some systems are allowed to scan it automatically, then you can yeah, uh, whitelist those that no notification will be sent. So another way attackers try and uh, um, try and pivot their way through your network is by uh, gaining uh, higher privileges than they have. So for example, after a regular fish, uh, attackers would look through that local system and look through the network drives in order to find uh, interesting like uh, credentials or other information to uh, gain higher privileges and be able to uh, yeah, pivot their way through the network. Um, so by playing in on this, by uh, salting your network with fake credentials, you are essentially giving them what they want in a controlled environment, obviously, uh, and thereby you, can, you would be able to detect them. Well, uh, a tool uh, like Mimikatz allows you to retrieve uh, Windows credentials from memory. Uh, there are some uh, APT groups that use their own tooling for this. Uh, however, um, they all try and um, uh, read memory of the ELSAS process in order to dump credentials. Well, you can actually implement this fairly easily. Uh, the one-liner run as net only uh, allows you to spawn a notepad process with these credentials. And the net only flag uh, will uh, allow you to spawn it with fake credentials since it only works for a network, it doesn't check locally. Um, from my perspective, when I'm doing a, a pen test and I find like existing uh, domain admin credentials, um, this is a happy moment for me uh, because I'm probably finally able to attack that server, gain access to, uh, to the domain control or whatever. So imagine, finally, after spending a day, three days, five days, finally finding your creds, and then all of a sudden all the alerts go off. This would suck. Um, I created a, a PowerShell script that actually does this. It's a modification of uh, Invoke Ranas by uh, Marta uh, Bone. Fuzzy, uh, um, however, this is just Mimikatz running. It's dumping credentials, regular old user, offsec lab, noob lab, 
nothing special going on. After this, I uh, use the invoke runner script, which allows you to specify a username, a domain name, uh, and a password. Uh, after you've run this, so I'm uh, filling in admin user, steal my creds, but you can make it a bit more believable, obviously, with a prod admin password, and now it's uh, spawned a conhost process, hidden, um, a hidden conhost process uh, that contains these, or at least that uses these credentials. And after this, you can see the, the admin user, steal my creds, uh, with the prod admin credentials, are, uh, reside in memory. Uh, if this, um, and it's important uh, to actually, uh, okay, wait, back. Um, this is funny. It's, it's nice to have. However, if you are attacking a network and you find like credentials, you'll probably want to check if the, uh, these are, uh, those are actually in existence. So every uh, domain joined PC would be able to query the Active Directory and check if the user exists. So it's important to actually uh, create a, a legitimate uh, domain admin account uh, with a very difficult password, and you all agree on not using that account. Uh, then you spread around the fake credentials. So the moment that an attacker gains access to those credentials from memory um, and checks in the Active Directory if the account is in existence, active, and is allowed to log on, um, he will probably use it, because it's very difficult from then on to determine if the account is actually uh, fake or not. However, do not put in the, uh, something in the description like fake honey account. <coughs> the description is also readable for the same users. Another nice um, monitoring feature is um, uh, to, uh, for a web server, is, uh, there's a web root. And um, whenever a file is created in that web root, for example, there's something going on if it's not an update or something uh, expected. Um, and we have created, thereby created the tool um, which allows you to uh, monitor the web route. Um, it's available on GitHub, and what it's doing is remotely logging in through SSH, um, and then it's making shasm of all the existing files. And whenever a change is detected, um, so it's pulling every 30 minutes, whenever a change is detected, a new file, a modified file, or a deleted file, then the alert goes out. Um, yeah, remote integrity tools available on GitHub. Um, it allows you to uh, send multiple notifications, for example, um, email, but also it's possible to send uh, Telegram messages. This is, for example, on my blog. Um, yeah, I've, I, I run an update, and then, um, yeah, I get a message from the Telegram bot that new files are created. This is expected, but whenever this is not expected, uh, yeah, a attacker might have uploaded the shell to your web server, so it's time to uh, act. Well, we also developed some active honeypots, so these are trying to actively lure the attacker into your trap. Um, and one of those things, um, when performing a, a pen test, you can use, uh, for example, Netstat, the output of that, uh, to see what existing connections are present on the system. So that can be interesting to uh, yeah, pivot uh, into the network uh, and attack those systems. Then you don't have to run an Nmap scan, so you will not be detected by the port scan detector. Um, but still, you have some knowledge about the network. Um, so you can do this, but we can also yeah, salt this NetSot uh, output. And for example, it's interesting when you uh, put MS SQL into it, because yeah, it, it's interesting because you can use XP command shell to pivot further into the network. Um, so the follow following screen shows an example. This is a NetSot output of a system. And you'll see that the MySQL uh, connection is active, but this is actually our script creating a fake uh, connection. So this could lure an attacker into the trap to connect to that system, and that will be our honeypot. And whenever it's touched, we get the notification. So another, well, obviously popular red teaming trick is using Responder. Responder allows you to directly uh, interact with uh, broadcast traffic of uh, uh, LLMNR and MBNS. Um, and what they do is they, uh, they are old Windows tricks in order to uh, broadcast uh, uh, or to do name resolution of systems. Uh, this, the responder was also used during the hacking team uh, hack. Um, and the interesting thing here was they only used the analyzed part, so they only looked at broadcasts. 
Um, so uh, you can use these broadcasts against uh, an attacker. Responder is, is quite loud. It uh, responds to any broadcast you do, unless you specify otherwise. Um, and we can take advantage of this by just plainly shouting back. So the moment sister, uh, uh, somebody is trying to, uh, to perform Responder on your internal network, uh, and you have this running, you'd be able to check out and uh, figure out where they are running it from or where they are trying to uh, send you uh, later on. So I made a tool that just sends out uh, uh, LNM and Air queries and MBNS queries uh, onto the network. So it's just running the entire time. It's broadcasting. The moment you start Responder, uh, it, it already detected one of the touch-to-be-burned uh, uh, LAN manager uh, uh, queries. Uh, and after this, it starts doing MBNS as well. And you can see it's uh, coming from there, and it's pointing to that system. So it's trying to get my system to connect to, one of, uh, to, to their system in order to uh, force like uh, Windows authentication or something like that. Um, uh, obviously, the name isn't that uh, cleverly uh, chosen. But this is just uh, as a proof of concept. You could also do uh, just not existing systems within your internal network by uh, keeping uh, by broadcasting those, it will allow you uh, to to figure out once somebody is just yeah, responding to anything you uh, you send out there. Well, these are some of our uh, some of our tricks, uh, and we would like to go back to the uh, to the initial breaches of hacking team and uh, Diginota breach in order to see uh, if we could map those on the attack. So step by step, and look if we would be able to to detect breaches like this using uh, our simple tricks. So let's go to the uh, hacking team. So he came in through that zero day on the router um, and started end mapping the network. Um, he started the slow end map. So if your uh, uh, the port scan detector was over there, um, he probably touched that server um, and then an alarm goes out and someone is on your network. Uh, so that would be a great point to detect simply det with a simple a detection mechanism to detect the attacker. Um, also, uh, he connected to a NAS, uh, network area storage, um, and that contained a VMDK with uh, credentials. He was able to dump the, uh, that, those credentials, a local admin. Um, you could solve those as well. So it's not only limited to uh, uh, put fake users into the uh, memory, but you could also put yeah, fake local users. Um, and whenever you use those users, uh, you could detect uh, that they are used and that something is compromised. Um, after gaining credentials from that VMDK, he was able to log on to the Exchange server. Um, he used Mimikatz to get uh, 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 yeah, passwords out of the memory, and he was able to obtain uh, domain admin credentials. You could also put fake domain admin credentials in there, and whenever that uh, user is used, um, yeah, something is going on, because who will get the, uh, uh, those credentials, those fake credentials from the memory that would be an attacker? Um, after gaining access to the exchange server, he uh, um, got access to Christian Posse's laptop, um, and there was a true kept container mounted with fake passwords in a hit.txt. Yeah, you could also put fake credentials in there. So there are a lot of layers uh, where you are able to detect them. Um, Using the Christian Posse's uh, information, he was able to get in the developer's uh, LAN. It's a, a, a segment. Um, also, he was scanning that network. So there again, the port scan detector would be, would be uh, triggering. So uh, multiple layers, it's possible to, to detect the attacker. And at least you are already compromised, but at least you know that you are compromised. So trying to map these on the uh, Diginota breach, uh, well, the .NET nuke. A uh, web server was, uh, was compromised. So if you would have been able to monitor the, uh, the, the web route, you would have uh, you've been notified of changes to files uh, or uh, additional files being added. Um, well, obviously, it's not a clear indication, but uh, it's, a, it's a point of uh, con you can start by contacting your uh, web admin, uh, asking if they have done some modifications to the website. If not, well, try and look at that uh, to see what's happening. After gaining access to the initial web server, connections to uh, MS SQL within the uh, Office LAN were, were made, uh, as well as internal checks uh, to see if there were 
interesting systems within the DMZ. Um, let's say you add like a, a honeypot, a port scan detector to your DMZ. It's not accessible from the internet. It's not accessible uh, from your internal network. The moment a system uh, starts, uh, like let's say your web server starts port scanning uh, your internal DMZ, uh, it's a well, it's at least uh, something to look at. But uh, to me, it's uh, it's an oh shit moment. Um, coming from the uh, uh, the web server, he was able to compromise a database server within the office LAN. Um, well, the fake MS SQL connections could have also worked here, or faking other connections. Next to that, obviously salting the system with uh, fake information or uh, credentials. Um, after a long while, he was able to uh, gain access to the uh, secure the signing network, uh, which is also an interesting uh, environment to put in a honeypot. Since these are, uh, well, obviously uh, should be silent networks, not, uh, not a lot of traffic there. So, um, this is our presentation. Are there any questions? <laughs> Thank you. So, Rick and Wesley. Thank you. Um, yes, if there are questions, uh, line up at the microphone, please. I think it was very good insight into a world that, well, maybe some of us don't know so good well. <coughs> so, well, if there are no questions, then I would say thank you. Thank you. Thank you.